Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I'm reading from Henry Nowen's Home Tonight, Further Reflections on the Parable of the Prodigal Son. And I'm reading from chapter on Homecoming to Gratitude. Listen to what Jesus says to Peter. When you were young, you girded yourself and went where you wanted to go. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will gird you and lead you where you would rather not go. Jesus' way is the opposite of psychological teaching. That way of the world proposes that in our youth we are dependent and others tell us what to do, while as older adults we can go our own way, be independent, and do what we want. Jesus, however, invites us to a new way, the opposite of this shallow way of living. He is saying, when you were young in the spiritual life, you were in control and made your choices about what you believed or did not believe. But when you grow older and more mature spiritually, you are to allow those around you to gird you and lead you where you would rather not go. Jesus' path leads towards an intimacy with the divine that supports the growth of faithful and unconditional love in our primary relationships, as well as growth in respectful care for those beyond our inner circles with whom we are interrelated in the human family. Love your enemies is tough love, and it is the path of our return from the corrosion of resentment to the joy of gratitude. Relinquishing the need to control and dominate family members, colleagues, and friends is the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus speaks about. Jesus lovingly challenges us, saying, Give up shaping and controlling events and people, and be willing to be girded and led. Jesus' invitation is a call to abandon relational safety zones and become vulnerable, interdependent, and obedient to the voice of unconditional love. It implies living gratefully and finding an intimate solidarity with brothers and sisters in the human family. This identification with people so different from ourselves is really wonderful, but also extremely difficult because instead of claiming control in these relationships, we open ourselves to an unknown future with many surprises. Solidarity with others requires attitude changes, acceptance of difference, and the struggle to live humbly and respectfully with them. It urges us to put aside self-righteousness and become equal in our relationships. Who gird, then girds us and leads us to be transformed into loving human beings? Our loved ones, spouses, partners, and children, as well as our leaders and those marginalized by society who are also the instruments of our transformation. All lead us in certain aspects of our lives. Each one wraps us in the swaddling bands of commitment before taking us far beyond our expectations of love to the path and greater intimacy and gratitude. Married life is wonderful, but it is also a furnace of transformation. Family demands fidelity that hurts. Friendships test our ability to love beyond our feelings. World events call us to more compassion than we think we have. And death is an invitation to hope beyond what we see and feel. Jesus came among us and lived the way of gratitude through his communion with the one he called Father. He entered into this passion, lost control of his life, and walked the narrow path of return while forgiving his enemies. He told his disciples, to you I open the Psalms and the prophets in Scripture so that you will understand that I had to struggle and suffer and then later enter into glory. Jesus' whole life is a life that moves from action, control, preaching, teaching, and performing miracles to passion where everything is done to him. He's arrested, flogged, spit upon, crowned, and nailed to the cross, and he doesn't control any of it. The fulfillment of Jesus' whole life is not in what he did, but in what was done to him. 
passion. Action is control. Passion is allowing ourselves to be emptied out at the hands of others so that the glory of God can be revealed in us. And our prayer today is from For All the Saints. Almighty God, who created us in your own image, grant us fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no pre peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.